That was beautiful. A couple of you already have commented on how beautiful that sound. It is so good to have you here with us in our third week. No, our fourth week of Lent. So glad to have you joining us live with your favorite beverage, maybe in your pajamas. And some of you were really on time to church today. I'm impressed. Welcome, welcome, welcome to United. We're so glad to have you. Feel free to leave comments. And um, I just want to do this up front and say, wrap your arms around yourself like this as best you can and give yourself a big hug from United Church of Hyde Park. It is so good to see you in, in, my, in the spirit. You know, I don't really see you. It's good to see you this morning. It's good to have you all here with us. We're so glad to have you here at United. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin today with a litany, and that litany should appear on the screen. But just in case you don't see it, uh, your refrain will be, we cry out to you, protect them. Your refrain after each time I say a line will be, we cry out to you, protect them. Out of the depths, we cry out to you in the face of the coronavirus. Creator God of the universe, God of a thousand names and faces, divine source of health and wholeness, whose compassion embraces the entire community of earth. Behold your fearful people all over the world as we confront the coronavirus. Out of the depths, we cry to you, O oh God. Holy God, hear our voices. Let your ear be attentive to our cries. As we pray for all who may be affected by this virus. For all health caregivers, nurses, physicians, aides, EMTs, paramedics, technician, and therapists. Out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For hospital and nursing home medical staff, assistants, and housekeepers who have close contact with patients, and for the patients themselves. Out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For all who travel for their daily work over land and sea and through the air, flight attendants, pilots, ship captains, and sailors, 
bus drivers, passengers, and long distance truck drivers. Out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For all who handle money, public workers, supermarkets, village markets, convenience store cashiers, out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For hospitality workers, hotel and motel receptionists, servers and housekeepers, out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For daycare center staff who cuddle and comfort children, and for all the children, out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For the homeless huddling for warmth over steam grates and under urban bridges, out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For the poor, the lonely, the vulnerable migrants and the isolated elderly who have no protectors, out of the depths, O oh God, we cry out to you, protect them. For clergy and people who care for and serve parishioners all over the world, we cry out to you, protect them. For the families and friends who have lost someone to the coronavirus, may the God of hope and comfort those who are impacted and out of the depths, we cry out to you, protect them. We cry out to you, protect them. Loving God, hasten the day when the virus will have run its course. Quicken scientists to develop medications and vaccines. Call out the best instincts of your people, love, neighborliness, compassion, and a sense of caring for every member of your beloved community on earth. We pray out of the depths to you, O oh God of hope, whom we call Jesus, Allah, Yahweh, divine mystery, Wakantaka, great spirit, amen. At this time, we will have another beautiful selection from our music, our musician.
Today, the scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 12. As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's face, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am that man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme today, the light. The light. One week ago today, an Asian male college student human being wrote these words. I was on my way to dinner yesterday with another Asian person, and we were yelled at because we have the coronavirus. Luckily, we got off the train immediately and were not physically harmed. Just because you're scared doesn't give you the right to target Asian people. This situation has happened to me multiple times over the past few weeks. We're all in this together, and there is no good reason to make people feel more unsafe. It just doesn't help our community or our society. Wow, I guess that would explain everything. If it were not for the Asians, we could all be living a wonderful life, virus-free. Why not put the blame on them for this horrific pandemic and lay it right there at the feet of China and all other Asians? This week, I finished reading the book Unfollow. Unfollow is a book, a memoir, that's written by Megan Phelps Roper. Megan Phelps Roper grew up at Westboro Baptist Church. She was not only a part of the, the movement, she was a central part. She was not only a central part, but if you look at videos and tapes, you will often see Megan Phelps center and up front. She worked hard. She was part of a movement that would tout and go all over the United States in their cars from Topeka, Kansas, driving just so they could arrive with their signs, God hates fags, and just so that they could show up at military funerals, protesting that people had lost their kids because God was mad at America. 
among other things, they were led by her grandfather, who is now deceased, to tell the truth. They believe our soldiers are dying in battle because God is angry, and they would be really, really happy right now because God is surely angry, and God is not happy with us right now. And until we repent, according to them, more people are going to die. Maybe not as extreme, but a lot of folks believe this. They believe that God is intervening. There are all kinds of conspiracy theorists out there, and I've heard opinions that range from it's prophesied in the Bible, we're living the last days, all the way to this virus was intentionally shared so that we can reduce the population. It seems like it's in our DNA to need to blame somebody or something for the virus, including our president. Did he say the Chinese virus? Can someone please take the mic from the man? Oprah, in her interview this week with Idris, says, we all lose if we just think of this as a physical virus. It is here, this virus, to teach us and show us something about ourselves as individuals and also as a world of people. It helps humans to make sense of their world by finding somebody or someone's or situations or systems or spirits to blame so that we can feel better. Who do we blame for this pandemic? Who do you blame for this pandemic? Go ahead, put it out there, because most of the arguments have a similar stream of similarity. We enter the biblical text today to find a man who is born blind. Jesus spots him right away and says, that man is blind. His sensitivity may have been heightened, but somehow something about the man relayed to him that this man was blind. This blindness that this man was born with impacted his life. We know this by the labeling of him as a beggar. Today, we would see him sitting in front of Walgreens, maybe with a sign someone had written, with a bucket for change, with the gravity of his head, leaning him downward, asking, do you have a little change to spare? And we often walk on by. We try to avoid such people. We sometimes even make disparaging comments and blame the person. Why don't they just get a job? We dismiss them and we go on with our lives. We blame them. We're not so very different from our biblical ancestors because they haven't taken two steps. And the disciples turn to Jesus and say, so who messed up? Who mucked up? Whose fault is it? Is it the mom? Is it the dad? Is it the man born blind? Who messed up? Who jacked this situation up? Who is to blame? Who screwed up things? Was the kid a mess up? Don't you want to know? Who is to blame? And the good news here is, and I hope you get it, Jesus looks at the disciples and says, no one is to blame. No one messed up. Now I want you to just sit here a minute and to sit with that. Nobody messed up. It's not anyone's fault. What would our world look like if we didn't have this need to blame? What would the world look like if we didn't have the need to say, hey, is it the dad's fault? Is it the mom? Is it the son's fault? How might the Asian college student feel when he stepped out of his doors if we didn't have the need to blame? What about the families grieving the loss of their child being killed in war and having the Westboro Baptist Church show up with signs saying because of their sin of the parents, your child was killed in war? What would it look like if gay people and trans people in the height of the AIDS epidemic who were socially isolated to an island by themselves, what would it look like 
we didn't need to find blame and put it at the victim's feet. If we dropped our arsenal family size of blame, how might we have treated the Muslims differently after 9-11? Or people displaced by hurricanes and tornadoes and storms? Or the Latin Americans coming across the border post-Trump election? You know what I hear? And it's good news. Jesus declaring to his own disciples, no one is to blame. In this biblical story is a human being who cannot see and ain't no one to blame. Jesus had already figured out that the man was blind. He was actually born into a situation. We are generally gifted with five senses to touch, to feel, to taste, to hear, and to see. Behold. And this person couldn't behold. He couldn't see. He could not get around on his own. He could not be dependent of others. I mean, he could not be dependent himself. He was dependent on others. He was seeing impaired, which is ironic right now, because honestly, I don't know if we can see. I mean, none of us can really see the future future. But right now, we can't even see the future. The coronavirus in weeks has ripped across our global world. We were blinded to the seriousness of this virus weeks ago, and now we cannot even see how it will impact us. There's one thing for certain, fanatics and cynics, believers and non-believers, lovers and haters, we don't know. We are blind. And in a spirit of humility, admitting we are blind is not a bad place to start. The text today says, Jesus is our light. I'm asking you to look beyond your own blindness in everything you've been taught today, to dig deeper and expand your arms and your hearts far and to reach for the light. Years ago, I went on a treat with some urban sisters. There seems to be some rhyme or reason that you have to go far out to a rural area to relax, to release, and to kind of just let the cares of the world go. So on a Friday evening, after we got off from work, we got in our cars and we started making our way to this retreat center. It was in the winter and so the days were shorter and so as we were driving, it was getting darker and darker outside. By the time we arrived for dinner, it was dark. I mean, not just dark, but like dark, dark. But it was a different dark from living in the city with the lights filtering. One sister said, I'm going to need some light because it's way too dark up here for me. She felt uncomfortable, surrounded by blackness, the blackness of the light with no, the blackness of the night with no light to penetrate or shatter the power of night, to shatter the power of darkness. I think these words sound appropriate for us today. It's dark up in here, and I'm going to need some light. I'm going to need to pray because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to dust the Bible off, take it off from the shelf. Wait a minute. First, I'm going to need to find the Bible because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to get my praise on because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to connect with other family members and friends because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to connect with whoever, because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to reach out to those who are most vulnerable by giving them a call and checking in on them. Because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need to get on Instagram next Saturday and join the social distance party with DJ Nice, because it's dark up in here. I'm going to need you to anchor yourself in the light. There's enough darkness and enough blame, but what is needed in this moment is light. 
There will be more darkness. But by extension and relationship with our God, I'm going to need you to be the light. In the words of Michelle Obama, I'm going to need you to go real high. I'm going to need my young people to think beyond themselves and remember your choices impact others. I'm going to need you to pray for those who do have to work and are on the front line. I'm going to need you to have to embrace the light and hope and love for all of our siblings all over the world by making good choices. I'm going to need y'all to stay in the house, recognizing our choices have a global impact. I'm going to need you to embrace the love of God and let it pour out of you. I'm going to need you to be the light. How many of you have said, if I had just a little bit more time, I could complete that project? Well, that time has arrived. Some of you said, if I just had a little bit more time, I'd spend some quality time with my kids and my family. I'm going to need you to spend some quality time with your kids and your family. I'm going to need us to reach back to what we learned in kindergarten and what we know to be true today. Some of you said, man, if I had more time, I'd read my Bible. Y'all can get through the whole Bible now. You got the time. You have the time to tackle the project. You have the time to spend with family. You have the time to pray. You have the time to be thoughtful. You have the time to care about somebody else. You have the time to do something special for somebody else. You have the time in this season of Lent when we encourage you to get closer to God. You have that time to get closer to God. Hallelujah. This man was born blind. He had a medical condition, and because he could not see, he could not work, and because he could not work, he was destitute. They labeled him a beggar. That was in the days when we weren't politically correct, so they just called it what it was, a beggar. And yet none of his situations were his fault. Sometimes stuff happened, and it just ain't nobody's fault. And yet with all the misfortune that had come his way, on this day, he would be exposed to the light. And he would see what he had not seen because he was blind and he couldn't see. May we, America, and Italy, and China, and the whole world put down our weapons long enough to see what we can't see. The light has come to show us we are inextricably connected to one another. If we've never understood how connected we are to one another, look at how this virus traveled. It traveled through connections. The light has also come to show us our blindness. The light comes to help us see also that we haven't seen before. We haven't seen before what we can be seen, what we can be shown now. Because our eyes have been open to the light. Amen. Let us pray. In your homes, alone or with others, think about the blessings that surround you. In this moment, when it seems so dark, extend yourself toward the light. May you not only reach toward the light, but may you, by contact, become the light. And may we be a light in a very dark time. Amen. Well, hello, United. It is offering time. Still call 
calling on you all to share your resources. Last week I was in the office and had a blessing that somebody came by to drop off their offering. I know that many of you are staying at home and that's a really, really, really good thing. So you can send your offering in the mail or online right now there will be a link that will help you get to electronically. Because if you've made it this far and you're watching us, you can make it all the way to the tithing page and you can share your financial resources. So we invite you to share. We need your financial resources and we thank you for being a wonderful resource this far. Let us lift up in the spirit our offerings. Dear Lord, with you as our shepherd, we share our gifts. We anoint these gifts. And we ask that they continue to be a light in our world. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we have about a 20 second delay in live and <laughs> when I'm talking. So this will be a little bit tricky, but this is our joys and concerns. If you have a joy or a concern, we invite you to share at this time. You can type it in, and if we don't get it in this moment, we will definitely pray for you later. Do you have any joys or concerns? We definitely, in this season of being asked to stay at our home, uh, if you are a member or even a friend and you need something, please let us know at United. If there's any way we can drop off, if you need something to be dropped off or you need groceries, uh, let us know. Um, if you're you know, feeling like the light's not getting to you, please reach out to us. We're available to make phone calls. We're available to pray with you. Um, as far as announcements, on Wednesday we gather together. You can look on our Facebook page and there's more about that. We gather together at 3 p.m. to tell jokes, to check in, and to have prayer. If you have a funny joke, please inbox me because I need help with my jokes. My jokes are okay, but I need a little help. So if you got a joke, please. But we gather together on Wednesdays again at 3 p.m. to share jokes, check in, and to be light with one another. So we'd love for you to join us on Zoom. There's a link on our page that allows you to get there. So um, I'm looking and I see that uh, Sunita has lifted up uh, a prayer uh, for the family and friends of Professor Ambrose Akukunla, who passed away yesterday. Um, I don't know if there will be any other joys, but again, we will pray for those joys. Let us pray right now. Dear God, we, uh, wow, sometimes we just take a moment to pause. Lord, help us to see glimpses of your hope and your blessings in these present times. We lift up all the ways that we are impacted um, by the coronavirus. We lift up all the ways we're impacted just by living. Living sometimes can be a struggle. We lift up families who have lost someone. Um, there's death that has happened that's not just the coronavirus. We lift up people that are grieving the loss of someone right now. We lift up our congregation, but we lift up our world. And we lift up this challenge to be more humane and kind, to stay at home, and to hope the best with this pandemic. 
Now we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples and that is ingrained in many of our own hearts and memories. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So before we go today, I want to say a special thanks to Joe and Edith and also our wonderful uh, videographer. I want to thank them for beautiful music and for beautiful recording and for coming out in a moment when we're called to stay at home. We hope to be present with you next Sunday. We're taking it day by day. Um, so we're glad that you joined us. Please leave us comments. Join us on Wednesday and let us know how we as a church can remain united and present with you. At this time, we're going to do the benediction. Should I do the benediction? With the, okay. <laughs> Without me? Okay. So here we go. Let us pray. Generally, Lord, we, our benediction is all about sending people into the world. But today, we are asking people to stay at home. We are ending our time together in a unique and very different way. So we hope that people will be safe. For those that go to work, that they will try to exercise as much caution as possible for those at home. We hope that folks will shine their light in the world because of our connection with you, O oh Lord. Something has shifted in our universe but your love for us has not shifted. It remains the same. So today, Lord, even in the midst of darkness, we pray for light. We pray that you open our eyes, that you cure us of the blindness that sometimes falls on us, that our desires to be followers of Christ be ignited, that whether we're on the phone now or in the crossing eight feet apart, or on social media, that you give us the words, that you give us your spirit and your light to shine. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. <laughs>